December 2nd and 9th. Uh, it's two sessions for three and a half hours for each session. It's called Becoming an Investor Ready Entrepreneur. It's uh, sponsored by our sister organization in North Carolina, the SBTDC in, uh, in North Carolina. And the reason I wanted to bring it up real quick here, uh, it's a really terrific event. I've been to it three times, and each time I've learned something else. It's, uh, it's really terrific. What they do is they get four or five actual investors, angel uh, investors, venture capital investors, and they have them on a panel. And they'll go through 15 or 20 different topics of interest to entrepreneurs. They'll uh, discuss those topics with the venture capitalists, with the investors that are there on that panel. And uh, they have an opportunity for the audience to ask questions uh, and have a, it's a really great interaction with these people. There is a cost associated with this event for the group in North Carolina, it's $95. But if you have an interest in it, uh, I think it's worth every penny. And so uh, feel free to contact us. You can send us an email and we'll give you some more information on that. Uh, and like I said, you can see it there. It's December 2nd and December 9th. So if you have an interest, just let us know. And with that, I'm going to introduce you to Linda Fitzgerald. Linda and Joe are going to handle the rest of this webinar. So Linda, it's all yours. Thank you, David. Thanks so much for joining us today. I'm excited to be here hosting this webinar for Joe. So Joe, if you could move us to the next slide, please. There we go. I will start with our disclaimer. The information provided in this webinar and any supplemental materials provided to registrants are intended for educational and informational purposes only and does not constitute professional financial or legal advice. No registrant should act or fail to act on the basis of any material contained in this webinar without obtaining proper financial, legal, and other professional advice specific to their situation. The Northern California Small Business Development Center and its host, the HSU Sponsored Programs Foundation, specifically disclaims any liability, loss, or risk, personal or otherwise, which is incurred as a consequence directly or indirectly of the use and application of any of the information presented in this webinar. And with that, I introduce you to Joe Rodola. And Joe is going to be, oh, I'll take this next slide, Joe. We are the Shasta yeah, Cascade yeah. Small Business Development Center. And technically we support people in Trinity and Shasta counties. So if you're meeting with us personally, you're in, in Trinity or Shasta County, but the beauty of webinars is we can support you wherever you are by sharing this webinar with you. SBDC is a nonprofit organization and we share confidential, or excuse me, we provide confidential, no cost advisory and training services to small businesses. So you can watch Joe present this webinar and you might say, gosh, I would love to have Joe as my advisor. And if you are in Shasta or Trinity County, you can meet with Joe to start your business, which is exactly what I did when I started my business five years ago. I met with Joe and he took me from, oh my gosh, Joe, I don't know what the heck I'm doing to Linda here, do this first. This is your first homework. And then we met again. Okay, Linda, here's how you move your business forward. And he helped me get my feet under me and take what was these crazy ideas and turn them into something real. So. Thank you, Joe. And now you are in very good hands with Joe Rodola. Thank you very much, Linda. I appreciate it. Well, welcome again, everybody. And that's me, Joe Rodola, lead advisor, Shasta Cascade. And as uh, Linda mentioned, uh, there are SPDC offices throughout the United States and Puerto Rico. We, we, we have them actually on the island uh, south of uh, Florida as well. Uh, so there's an SPDC office covering every county uh, in the United States. We happen to be covering Trinity and Shasta County currently. So this particular presentation is geared towards those two counties when we talk about uh, licensing certifications and so forth. And you'll be receiving copies of this deck. So don't, uh, don't uh, fret. If you don't remember uh, these things we're talking about, you'll get a copy of them. You'll also get a copy of a step-by-step -step chronological procedure of things to think about when you start your business. It's about 20, 25 steps 
that you can check off as you go based on this seminar. Uh, and you'll get a list of all the addresses and contact information of the various organizations you may need to go to in Shasta County to get fictitious name, to get your business license, to get your seller's permit, all the little things you may need to get. You'll get a copy of that as well. Uh, so you don't have to write everything down, but suffice it to say, we'll send you that after we're done. As you can see, basically, I'm an old credit guy, okay? 25 years in the banking industry, I made loans of various types, houses, boats, and business loans for uh, over 20 of those 25 years. I've owned my own small business, consulting business for 10, uh, and I've been a business advisor for Superior California Economic Development, otherwise known as SCED, and the SPDC for the last eight uh, and my business is to help people with credit problems. So, Mr. Credit, how about that? This is just a small list of the majority of our local consultants that are currently on board. And this is not complete, okay? We've added a few in recent days. So I'm going to have to add a couple more names on here. As you can see, we have advisors in QuickBooks, marketing, uh, uh, tech, web development, uh, small business coaching. Linda's phenomenal. And we have Todd Jones who helps us with tech startups. Not only that, but we have state in our group that we have uh, basically our Northern California group uh, is uh, covers from Stockton to the Oregon border, San Francisco to Lake Tahoe. It's the whole North state. So with that in mind, in Sacramento, we have a bunch of super, I call them super specialists, okay? We have specialists in HR, specialists in Kickstarter and GoFundMe. We've got a specialist in uh, ag. We have a specialist in restaurants, Louise. So we can put you in touch with various specialists since I know a, a little about a lot of things, except for credit. <laughs> but if you want to narrow in on certain things, we're going to hook you up with these people too. Rebecca, QuickBooks. If, you have, if you're going to be doing QuickBooks or using QuickBooks for your business, her classes are phenomenal. Okay. And again, all of this is at no charge. We're technically paying for this with our tax money. So might as well take advantage of it. We're all paying taxes. So, you know, not a bad deal. So uh, uh, again, that's going to be normally your next phase or step after this is to sign up completely for service and get an individual consulting counseling a session. We're doing them either by Zoom or by phone currently with the shutdown and the purple tier and all that fancy stuff. We're not doing any in person, but we can get the job done by phone or Zoom or, or, or whatever. Here's the agenda today. Uh, we're going to talk about, uh, we're in the introduction, we already did the introduction. We're going to talk about discovery, keeping it legal, taking you from your idea to reality, turning your idea into a business plan, very important piece, and we'll wrap it up. We should be done in an hour and a half. And again, this class was produced for the Shasta Cascade SBDC geographic zone, the North State. Uh, but again, we have SBDC offices throughout California and the United States. And again, the objective here is to see if we can get you open, right? We want to get you open and we want to get you open in the best way possible for whatever business you're going to be doing. Whether it's a service business, retail, medical, restaurant or food service, recreation, you know, whatever it is, we want to get you from today to opening your doors and beyond. Okay. This last week, uh, thank the Lord, I've been involved in assisting longtime clients that we've had here for over five years. I've been involved with them for over five years that are thinking of expanding of all things. How about that? Even in a COVID environment, 
certain businesses are booming. So, so they're interested in expanding. So we can continue to help you with that all through the process of your business. All right, so discovery, understanding it all. What you wanna do, of course, is assess the feasibility. I like to say really to start with self-assessment. So self-assessment, are you sure you really wanna do this, okay? Do you have the temperament to, uh, I like to call it be on all the time, right, Linda? You gotta be, you gotta be on the game because <laughs> yeah. you don't know what time of day you're gonna get a phone call, what time of day you're gonna get an email, what time of day you're gonna get a text from somebody needing your help. So, so you gotta be able to adjust to that. Are you gonna make any money, of course, important? We'll talk about that. So that means you have to assess the market, make sure that you have something people want. Uh, and of course, money. Money still makes the world go round. So again, are you a good fit? Do you have the personality? Are you outgoing? Can you, do you believe in your product or service beyond a shadow of a doubt? And can you project that on everybody that wants to buy? Hugely important. Do you have the skills and experience to do that job? Whatever that, whatever that business might be. When uh, I ended up actually being forced into business, about that. Uh, our little office of consumer credit counseling, CCCS, well, was on May 7th, 2010, was unceremoniously closed. Our head office came in, we knew it was coming, and closed all the small offices of consumer credit counseling throughout California, Oregon, and Washington on May 7th, 2010. So all of a sudden at the age, the ripe old age of 55, I had to look for work. I, I unfortunately couldn't retire yet. So going into business, because I had some, some, uh, uh, some clients that needed my other services with, with even that office being closed, I decided to open up a consulting business so I could continue to service those ongoing clients. I teach what's called the first time home buyer class uh, for the county of Shasta and the city of Reading and the city of Shasta Lake. Been teaching that now for, uh, it's over 15 years. So, uh, uh, so I, you know, I, I continued to teach that class and had to have a conduit by which the cities and counties could pay me. So I opened a business, okay? So uh, there I go, 10 years ago, opened, uh, opened my business out of sheer necessity. You notice I didn't open a pizza parlor. I didn't open a, uh, 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 you know, a hot dog stand, all right? I opened something involving, involved with what I knew, credit. Credit is my life, been that way for years. So uh, I stuck in my wheelhouse. So hopefully you're going to stick in something you're good at. Either it's a hobby, an avocation, a, a, a side thing you've been doing. I have a nephew down in Sacramento, of all things, who works for uh, SMUD. SMUD is the uh, Reading Utility District for Sacramento. It's Sacramento Mus Municipal Utility District, right? He's a computer guy. So now this last four months with the, with the shutdown, he's making cutting boards. He loves to work with wood. And he's in his garage with his saws and his sanders and all that. And now he's opened up his own Etsy uh, selling platform and is selling his multicolored cutting boards online. That's something. You just, you just, anything could become a business. It's amazing. Uh, of course, you have to have money. Uh, and uh, are you ready to give up the employee status and be a 24 7 owner? Five core skills, again, of, of, of owning a business. Can you sell it? Can you market it? Can you manage it? Can you plan? And can you adapt? In this day and age, let's face it, everybody, you can't be narrow-minded, can you? Ask every restaurant owner in, in Reading, right? Who would have thunk that we're eating in the parking lot of these places? 
you know? Talk about adapt, right? So got to be able to be adaptable. Again, are you an employee or are you self-employed? These are kind of some of the things to think about. An employee follows instruction, usually have set hours, uh, you have a work schedule, you're paid by the hour or fixed salary. And normally, unless you have a 401k, probably don't invest in the company. Uh, employer, it's all you, baby. You know, decides what the instructions are to follow, work hours, set your own schedule 24-7. Paid if the company makes money and that's it. Okay. And obviously, you're investing in your own company. That's the bottom line. What are your personal goals? Okay. Is family important? Your talents being used appropriately? Is, is your location right? Uh, and, you know, can you put off income for now until later? I had the, uh, the uh, really fortunate luxury in 2010 of having a severance package. Very unusual thing. I haven't, uh, that was the first time I really ever experienced a severance package. And the severance package was uh, for so many, I was 13 years with CCCS and they gave me like a month salary for the first five years and a half years, a half month salary for the next, you know, whatever's. So I had like eight or nine months of salary that they gave me a severance and then I could start unemployment. Okay, so technically that bought me the time, didn't it, to get my doors open, get my license in place, get my insurance done, my business cards, my logos, all the things I needed to do, I got to get done uh, uh, with, with the luck of that severance package and unemployment. So like my, like my uh, nephew that just opened, he still got his day job. He comes home in the evening, says hi to the kids, kisses the wife on the head, has some dinner, and goes out and builds cutting boards. So a lot of people start their businesses like that as a side, uh, uh, a side hustle. Okay, so money. Again, I'm a money guy, so we always jump right into the money thing, right? You're going to have to have money. There are very few, if any, grants available uh, uh, in, in retail, food service, uh, uh, you know, uh, recreation, uh, very few grants available for startups, okay? Startups, very, very, very tight, very difficult, okay? Uh, so you're going to be forced to either borrow money or get money from, you know, family and friends, obviously something to think about. Uh, selling assets, you know, uh, if you have an old... Uh, motorcycle in the garage or a boat you don't use anymore. You know, a lot of people will just sell those things, use that money as seed money. I've had some people, although not the best way to go, use credit cards to get off the ground. Be real careful if you do that. I've had a couple people get second mortgages on their house, a uh, line of credit, use that. Again, be careful because you're leveraging your home and taking a gamble on opening that business, obviously that can be done. But again, we'll talk individually if you have those thoughts. Don't forget the 401ks can be used. Sometimes you can borrow money against the 401k and pay yourself back each month. I had one gentleman using the ROBS, ROBS program, stands for retirement, uh, uh, to open a business. You can use your 401k to open a business, it does take some uh, T-crossing and I-dotting for the IRS to not freak out, okay? So we always suggest you contact the CPA to make sure that you're doing it correctly. But you can withdraw money from the 401k, put it directly into the business, and not have to pay penalties. So I've had people do that, okay? I've had people have uh, Grandma, Aunt Millie, Uncle Bob uh, putting up some dough. If you do it, don't forget to make it a, to make it uh, legal. In other words, don't forget to, to write it up. In other words, okay. Write up the, uh, uh, the, the, the loan or however you're going to be doing it with this person, because you want to make sure that you know what you're going to have to do and what 
what they're going to do for you. Okay. Peer to peer doesn't happen very often, uh, especially locally. But I like to use the example, uh, let's say you want to open a pizza parlor. And you got a brother, and he's got a pizza parlor in Texas. And uh, so you pick his brain, right? Because you're not going to compete with him. You're going to be selling pizzas here. And, uh, and maybe he would even invest in your, uh, in your pizza place out here. Possibility. So peer-to-peer could work in certain circumstances. Crowdfunding. Again, we talked briefly earlier about Kickstarter, GoFundMe. There are several platforms online that you can use uh, to potentially ask for people to uh, uh, invest small bits of money into your crowdfunding program. I had a company that was building a patent pending kayak about four years ago, and they did Kickstarter. And uh, they could, you know, they did things like, uh, you know, for $25, you get a hat and a t-shirt or, you know, with the logo on it. And uh, for $50, you get, you know, a mug and a t-shirt and a hat. You you get the idea. They were using incentives. And if you were going to put in 2000, you'd get one of the first kayaks off the assembly line uh, with certain kinds of options, you know because this kayak could be converted into a hunting kayak, a diving kayak, a fishing kayak. So it was basically a sportsman's kayak, okay? So crowdfunding can work, it's possible. Angel investors, we technically, a lot of people don't know this, but we kind of have a shark tank in town. How about that? Uh, And we don't have a bald guy that yells at you like the TV show, so that's always good. And, uh, but they're here. Uh, They have turned their investment eyes on to things that are what we like to call scalable. So in other words, uh, if you've got the next uh, best uh, sliced bread, you know, uh, that could start off with some local sales and balloon into a bunch of money somewhere along the line. Maybe you could sell out to a big corporation for five, 10, 20 million dollars, uh, uh, you know, in a few years by starting your invention. Uh, they'll be they will consider that a mom and pop retail store, probably they will not invest in. So, but we have it. And venture capital normally doesn't work until you're open for a while, uh, unless you have, again, a, you know, let's say you're, uh, I don't know, uh, you've got an aunt or an uncle that knows uh, Matthew McConaughey. And they know that Matthew likes something, you know, whatever that is, uh, ecology-related businesses. And you have an ecology-based business. And your brother, or your, you know, puts you in touch with them, and they might be willing to invest directly. So that could be a, a possibility. A lot of those people that have a lot of money are always looking for ways to invest in things other than banks because they don't get any money out of the banks anymore. And not everybody wants to play the stock market. So there you go. How much do you need to start a business? Let's talk about that real quickly. I started on a couple hundred bucks. Okay. Now, people say, well, how did you do that? Okay, so business license, 75. A couple hundred business cards from Vistaprint, 10 bucks. Uh, I I used my name in the business, Joe Radola's Debt Consulting, okay? So I didn't have to file fictitious names, saved me a few, uh, about 150 bucks there. Uh, Didn't have to put it in the newspaper. Okay, that delays time. My biggest thing I had to come up with was a million dollar liability insurance policy to teach these classes on behalf of the county and the city. So they required me to carry a million dollar liability. That was my worst case scenario. Okay, so I called State Farm, my insurance carrier. They have my cars, my house and everything else, boat. And I said, you know, I need a million dollar policy. Can you guys do it? Oh, yeah, sure. And they ask you a bunch of questions, you know, 
Uh, are you going to use chainsaws, mowers? You're going to climb ladders. You're going to clean gutters, cut down trees, all the stuff that's high risk. I said, no, no, no I'm just going to tell people about stuff I know. How to buy houses, real estate, loans, lending. I want to, I'm just going to pass on information. That's all I'm going to do. So they said, oh, great. That's the low risk category. Okay. Low risk category. Uh, and then they called me back the next day and said, all right, for a million dollar liability policy for the business and a million dollar umbrella to protect my wife and I on our personal cars is 60, 60 bucks a month, basically. So that was my biggest expense besides the business license to get off the ground. See, so that's service business is the cheapest to open. I operate out of my house. I operate utilizing my cell phone. I operate out of a little uh, uh, laptop I have. You know, it's, it's very low key. Second bedroom of the house is where I operate out of. I do all my teaching off site at various uh, places around town and uh, pretty clean. But if you're going to open a brewery or you're going to open a dress shop, you know, it's obviously going to be a lot more expensive than that. So in that particular case, how much money should you have before you start searching for places to give you money? 25, 30%. Okay. 25 or 30%. So if it's a hundred thousand dollars, you need to start, you need 25,000 to $30,000 of your own money before you can go anywhere to ask for more. And the more you have, the better, okay? Because the environment now, unfortunately, with all the time and effort being placed in saving existing businesses, from the Treasury Department to Washington, to the SBA, to the banks, and the cities and the counties, Everybody's trying to save existing businesses. Money's tight. I'm not going to lie. Money's tight. It can be gotten to, but money's tight. So you got conventional bank loans. We talked about that, 25 30%, maybe more, depending on the type of uh, project you have. And then, and then we try to find you a loan. Commercial finance companies, we have several out of the area, but none in Reading. Okay, Sacramento is the closest place as far as I know. Chico may have some, I'm not sure. But we can hook you up on commercial finance companies if we have to go away from banks. Let's talk quickly about banks. I used to work for a bank that unfortunately I no longer support aggressively. And that's because it's Bank of America, okay? Uh -huh. Nothing against Bank of America as a bank to put money in. No problem. Great ATM uh, network. ATMs all over the place. In fact, they have more ATMs now than branches. They've closed a lot of branches, but they still got ATMs. They got a couple in Anderson. They got one at the, at the outlets in Anderson. You know, they got them every, different little places. Red Bluff. <clears throat> but they're a big bank. Okay, Wells Fargo, big bank, uh, Citibank, Chase, big bank. So they have products. They have products. They have uh, they have a latte. They got a mocha, you know, but very little. Uh, 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 they're not going to make you a custom made <laughs> a custom made drink over there. You know what I'm saying? They got products. Then you got the mid range banks, U.S. Bank. Uh, Merchants Bank of Commerce has gotten medium size. Uh, Tri Counties is headed headed to medium size. Uh, you got Mechanics Bank. Okay, they have products and some flexibility. Okay, that's cool. As long as they have some flexibility, you may be able to convince somebody to take a look at it, right? And then you got two local banks left. Really, you've got Golden Valley. And you've got Cornerstone Community Bank. Golden Valley Bank is uh, head office is in Chico. So pretty close, right? And Cornerstone Community Bank, their head office is on Hartnell. Okay. K 
can't get any closer than that. Uh, uh, Cornerstone has currently three offices, Red Bluff, that's where their processing center is. Uh, they have a little office on California Street, the old Tri-Counties Bank that used to, it has a drive up window. And they built their uh, main office in Reading, uh, where the CEO is, Jeff, over in the old Rayleigh's parking lot on Hartnell. So they're the local, and uh, it's, not a, it's not a word, localist. They're the localist bank we have, <laughs> and the most imaginative. They still do things the way I used to do things in 1972, 73 before the majority of you guys were born. Uh, uh, you come in, you apply, you talk to me, you sign an application. I look at your credit report. There was only one back then. I call you in a couple of days. I review your finances and I either say yes or no. If I say yes, I give you a check. You come in, pick it up from me, handshake and off you go, right? Well, that's the way Cornerstone still does business. You go in, you talk to them, you fill out the paperwork, they do the handshake thing, they say yes or no, and they give you a check. Well, if I if I was going to go back to work for a bank, that is where I would, I'd sit on the doorstep till they hire me, all right? Because that is a place you can go and deal with an with a individual person, and the bank cares completely about Shasta County, Trinity County, a little of Tehama, a little assist to you, and they don't care about San Francisco, LA, Sacramento, New York, China. No, they don't care about any of that. Whereas the big banks have to care about all that, right? So that's the big difference between banks, financial institutes, my little preach of the day. Micro enterprise loans, we're gonna talk about where they are, but we have a micro enterprise lender right here in town called SCED, I used to work for them, spent two years there. Superior California Economic Development, they're also over on Hart, uh, Hartnell, uh, uh, right across the street from the retirement home place over there uh, uh, on, uh, on Hartnell. Uh, and they do loans in the 10 to 50,000 range, a little differently than banks. You still need a business plan, you still need financial forecasts, but they don't hold you to monthly payments, you know, right off the bat. Uh, Bob Nash runs th that particular group. Uh, Bob's a great guy. Uh, I've known him for quite a bit longer than I work for him. And uh, he owns the uh, Nash Ranch out on Old Oregon Trail out here, uh, the pumpkin patch. And uh, like I say, another, he's an old banker too. How about that? And so great group. We work with them and we'll help you with that as well. We don't have any economic development loans available at the EDC currently. Some areas of the California and the United States, the Economic Development Agency has, has money, okay? It's just that we don't hear. And then SBA loans. SBA loans come in two types, effectively two types. They have a, a, a quickie loan, we call it. It's, it's a accelerated loan, it's about 25 grand or less. But they have the 7A program and the 504. The five, and we'll talk about that when you come in. 504 is for buying buildings. It is by far the only 10% down payment required uh, building loan, the best in America today. And the rates right now are nuts. They're below 3%, <laughs> it's goofy. And I've been around a long time. I can tell you, that's real goofy. So that's a 504 loan. The 7A loans for everything else. Okay, 7A loans for everything else. It's for a cash flow needs, uh, uh, hiring people, uh, inventory, uh, equipment. That's what the 7A loan program is. That is a guarantee only on the 7A program. In other words, the bank will give you the money and the SBA guarantees to the bank up to 75% of the amount you borrow. That's why banks love those, by the way. Going over to the other side, there's another piece of the equation. I will help educate you on the loan process. That's one of the reasons that people visit me normally early on in the process is to know how it works. 
I filled out a lot of applications in my day, help people do it. Uh, and so be happy to help you as well. But credit also helps make the world go round. So one of the things I would like all of you to do before you come in and see me for the first time, if you do not already do this, find out where you stand credit wise. Okay. So you've got uh, uh, in the next slide, I'll cover it, but basically I'll have you go to credit karma, check out what your score is. Then I'll have you go to annualcreditreport.com. If the score is not above 700, 700 is the magic number, by the way. So if you do follow your credit score, your 710, 720, 750, 800, you know, hey, no problem. No problem. You don't need to go any further if you know that. But if you're 625, 580, 610, even 650, uh, maybe we should talk. Maybe we should talk. I could help you for free through SPDC to take a look at the credit. I can give you ideas of how to fix it, create, you know, increase it, your score, and how to fix stuff. All right. So obtain a credit report and score. We'll walk you through that on the next page. Begin credit repair and, of course, start your business plan. So here's kind of the two places I like to suggest people go. For a free credit score, creditkarma.com. It's not perfect, okay? It's not perfect. In other words, it's not going to match your score to the, to the exact number, okay? It gives you a weighted score because there's three agencies, as you can see. Equifax, Experian, TransUnion, there's three, three different agencies. You probably, I do, I have three different scores because they don't talk to each other. These three companies don't talk to each other. <clears throat> so I could have a credit card on one, not on the other. I could have a house loan on one, not on the other. Crazy, but that's the way it is. So Credit Karma gives you a aggregate score, not exactly the FICO score, but again, we don't wanna talk about semantics. The main thing you're shooting for is 700 plus, if you're below 700, if you're 680, 690, you're fine. If you're 620, 630, 610, let's work on it. If you're below six, we got to we gotta work on it pretty, pretty aggressively because the banks, financial institutions, if you're 590, 580, tough, real tough, okay? So how do you pull the report? Annualcreditreport.com. You can pull all three or individual printouts of the actual report once per calendar year. So technically, with this being the end of the year, just about, right? If you hadn't pulled Equifax, Experian, TransUnion at this moment, you could pull all three today. And technically, you would be allowed to pull them again in January if you wanted. Nobody does that, but you get the idea. So once per calendar year. Equifax, Experian, TransUnion. Which one do I like to look at? I like to look at Experian. So if you're going to print one, go to annualcreditreport.com for free, pull the Experian up and print it. And that'll give you the list of items that create your score. Because without a credit report, you can't have a score. Okay? Because the score is made up of how well you've made the payments, how much you owe to these people, how long have you had credit, how many credit cards do you have, do you have any, back, you know, in the rear student loans, do you owe back child support or uh, uh, alimony, uh, have you missed payments, all those things pop up on the credit report and create the score, okay? Nick, I'm sorry. Yes, Linda, did you have something? No, no questions so far. All right, cool. Uh, next thing is market assessment. Basically, what we're saying here is, does anybody want what you got? Okay, that's probably the best way to look at it, right? Yeah. 
Let's Hello? pause for just a moment because I noticed someone turned their microphone on. Does anyone have a question? Feel free to let us know. Okay, I'm going to turn their microphone off because what's happening is they're making some sound and it's coming across. So, all right, cool. Thanks. Go ahead, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. So again, does you know the, in the market assessment area, there's some you know, do you have something people want? In my particular situation, credit and credit repair is always needed. Okay, uh, car repairs, unless you're a mechanic, they're always needed. Okay, so there are certain places and certain things that are always needed. So in your particular case, does, do you have something people need? And do you have something that people are going to want more than maybe if I'm doing the same thing you are, maybe you're doing it better than me. Right? So that's kind of the way to look at it. Is there more demand than supply? Always good. Okay. I have a young gentleman that I work with on an ongoing basis that has a kayak company in town. And by the way, if anybody's ever wanting to go on a kayak trip on Whiskey Town, check out Headwaters. Neat place. Okay. So guess what? Kayak places, RV places, selling trailers, they can't keep them in the showrooms. Why? Because COVID has created a market, a huge increase in market for those people that sell those products. Because, you, you know, this is a facetious deal, but nobody's flying. No one's traveling. No one's going on cruise ships. No one's going to Hawaii. I can attest to that. <laughs> Mine was just changed to next year, my 40th anniversary trip to Maui. So what are they going to do? What are people going to do? They're going to spend their money local. So they're buying kayaks, buying boats, they're buying RVs, hooking it up to the truck and driving around the United States in the open air to see America. Isn't that wild? So th the market changed just because of COVID and the lockdown and the fact that the airplanes, you know, aren't flying and the ships aren't, aren't going anywhere, you know? So, so that's the idea. Supply and demand, huge. Always have a team. We're already on your team. Linda, myself. Emily at the front desk, our admin, she is phenomenal. Uh, Rebecca, QuickBooks, David, our boss. You're, we're on your team already. We're here, okay? Uh, I can guide you. I don't have the money to lend to you, but I can tell you where to get it, okay? So you're going to need a banker. Always good to have, if you're not good at books, maybe your grandma or your aunt or uncle are, you know, so they can help you with your bookkeeping. Okay, so you're going to need that. An attorney wouldn't hurt. So if you got an aunt, an uncle, a, a, a good buddy that's an attorney, always nice to have them uh, on your side. Okay. And obviously, you have a product or service that is needed. In the marketing and sales area, it wouldn't hurt to have somebody who understands Facebook and, and uh, you know, Instagram and all that jazz because, uh uh, Lonnie and her classes, Lonnie's our marketing, one of our marketing specialists, and she's got a lot of people showing up at her classes. Facebook, how to, how to use Facebook, how to use all the different types of uh, online systems besides just a website, you know, Instagram, tweeting. You know, I've never tweeted in my life, sorry to say, but that's the truth. Hey, people use all those platforms to, to, for low cost advertising, period. So all those things. Any questions? We don't have any right now. Feel free to turn your microphone on and ask a question. It's great to get some interaction in these conversations because Joe can give examples specific to what your business type is. A nice group of people involved too. Thank you all again for coming. Okay, making it legal. Uh, we talked about legal structures. Did you want to? Uh, so let's go. Sorry. Christine, yeah, did Chris you want to ask something? 
Oh, I do. Sure, so Joe, ahead. I have helped my husband with his business for almost the last 20 years. Okay. And in doing so, I've stepped away from the marketplace to help him and raise our children. And what the venture I was going into was going to be like a resort destination and COVID just hit me like crazy this year. Right. And so we own the property and I started a bank account yesterday with Chase to do a woman owned business on the property in Siskiyou County. We have electricity, we have water. Um, it's, we have a hydro plant, plant up there and I decided if I can't open up a resort destination, well, I could um, start a nursery up there and grow conifers because of all the fires we've had. So I've been touring the nurseries, took a class out at the college, and just now putting my business plan together. And so I guess the next step would probably be meeting with you guys. So does it matter that I live in Reading, but yet we own this place up there? And how do you, I, I'm not ready to step into living up there full time until probably next year. Sure. Uh, but I go up there a lot. Like I was just up there for five days and um, right. but there's a few things I'm going to need. Now I cannot get property insurance up there for our business because everybody in that area, since the red salmon fire came through, everyone's lost their um, house insurance. Right. So those are some of the questions. I know it's probably more than what other people I might be experiencing, but hopefully I'm asking questions that people are too shy to ask. <laughs> no, no problem. You, you've got options available as far as okay. uh, with you living here, uh, even your property is outside of our uh, jurisdictional county. You could come to us. Okay. Not a problem. Right. Uh, Siskiyou County does have a SPDC office. Uh, and it's in Wairika. Uh, so uh, you've got two choices there. Uh, again, with my situation, again, knowing uh, a little about a lot, <laughs> uh, one of the things we would probably do here, and I would, I would imagine the same up there because we don't have specialists in ag per se, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'd probably hook you up with our ag specialists in Sacramento and as one of the things we would do okay. to make sure that all your uh, T's are crossed and I's and are dotted with the county rules and regulations for selling plant products, uh, uh, you know, uh, trees. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so, so you can, it's your choice. You can go to us or you can go to the Wairika SPDC office uh, as well. So there's also a sister company of ours that I'm going to go ahead and bring up now. Okay. We're seeing a huge increase in women owned businesses, mm -hmm. a huge increase. And we have a sister cousin, <laughs> a relative organization called the women's business center. And you may have heard of WBC. Yes. They are. Yeah. They are part of the Jedi group. Uh, Jefferson Economic Development out of uh, Mount Shasta. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tricia Funk, a lovely lady that I've worked with for the last 10 or 12 years uh, on a side uh, deal, runs the Women's Business Center. Okay. Uh, so, so they also, we, we, we share, we share clients. Okay. Okay. And being there in Siskiyou County and their head office, Nancy's the, uh, the director up there in, in Mount Shasta, they may also have valuable information to, to, for you in the area of, since they're more rural than we are, obviously. Uh, yeah. So don't forget to, to, to look into the Women's Business Center at Jedi. They have their office for the Women's Business Center down here in Reading. It's over on Placer. But Nancy in the head office of Jedi is in Mount Shasta. So we'll team up, all of us, to help you with this thing. Okay. It's all perfect. Right. It's perfect. You'll have the best of both worlds. Awesome. I can have my cake and eat it, too. You got it. All right. Thanks, Joe. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Anything else? No, we're good. Okay, make it legal. That's kind of important. And this is kind of a cool way to understand the ways and legal structures of businesses. These are kind of the four main uh, business types. You've probably heard about them. Sole proprietor. Sole proprietor is an individual owner. That's what I am. I'm a sole proprietor. Uh, technically, if the good Lord decided, don't do it, to call me up today, uh, my business ceases to exist uh, today. So sole proprietor, uh, no employees, just me. Uh, it's the easiest to set up, the cheapest to set up, but it's also the most risk. In other words, if I was building rockets, <laughs> I would not be a sole proprietor, okay? I, I'd be a corporation because you got to protect your personal assets. So sole proprietor has the least amount of protection. Partnership is when more than one person's involved. You and a friend, you and a buddy, okay? Team up, partnership. You may have 50-50 ownership, 60-40. You write it up as a partnership agreement. And the money is passed to you individually and you pay your taxes individually through the partnership. LLC is the next normal step, limited liability company. Uh, I call it the mini corporation. It costs a little bit more. You can have a company like Legal Zoom help you or Legal Shield uh, or an attorney. Okay. If you use Legal Zoom or Shield, you'll probably pay between 200, 250 bucks to get it set up. It's a separate entity from you. The LLC's the business has its own tax ID number. And so it's a little more protected for you individually. And the most protection individually, of course, is the corporation. There are several types. There's C, a corporation C Corp, an S Corp, and there's some various in-betweens. There's a, a 503C for nonprofit, uh, 506C, all sorts of them. So the corporation, again, uh, very separate from you, separate tax ID, so forth. I noticed a hand up. Carla, did you have a question? No? No, no. Oh, wait, there we go. Yeah. Yep, she is. There yeah, she is. I was, I didn't want to, I actually, you turned to the page of one of the questions. Um, my partner and I are deciding, we're talking today whether or not we wanted to go with a general a partnership, a joint venture. Um, we were just looking at the paperwork to figure out and we were like, oh crap, this is going to be just not a, we're going to do this this afternoon type of thing. Yeah. Then we came online and I saw this online. So I was like, Hey, I'm just going to sign up and do this today then. So it's go. all so working you, out. Yeah. yeah your, your next step then would be to talk to us and we can set up even a zoom with the, with the two of you and the three of us could chat about those options. No problem. Yeah, that would be that would be really awesome. We're wanting to start a um, a production company here in Western Trinity County. Very good. Cool. So working with children probably, and you know, and we've we've got a website and everything up, but we just are like, okay, let's do this because we can do it. And COVID's been helpful this way, pushing us to go online with our lives. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> it, does, it does force people to make decisions that's for sure very good we'll be happy to help you we'll be happy to help you with that okay i'll i'll mute my video my audio <laughs> all right thanks so again corporations normally and these are steps you can take by the way you can always start out as a sole proprietor and end up as a corporation that's not a problem okay it, it, it in fact that's one of the one of the step processes Licensing, of course, is important. A lot of different licenses, depending on the business. Uh, I have a slide coming up that will assist you in identifying what licenses you may need based on the type of business you're opening and where. Suffice it to say that you'll need to have at least a business license if you are in Anderson City Limits, Reading City Limits, Shasta Lake City Limits. As far as I'm aware, at this juncture today, 
Those are the only three areas that if your business is in those little boxes on the map, that would be, and it's your head office per se, like my, my second bedroom head office <laughs> is in the city of Reading. So I have a city of Reading license. How about that? So, so if you're in Anderson, it'd be Anderson, Shasta Lake, it'd be Shasta Lake. Theoretically, if you do not, if your business is in Palisadro, Cottonwood, uh, Bella Vista, Lakehead, Bernie, may not be any requirements. In fact, as far as I know, there is no license requirements. Just depends on the business. You may have certifications and requirements depending on what type of business you have, but a city business license is only in an incorporated city. Again, employer ID, if you're a, 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 an LLC or you are a corporation, uh, you're gonna definitely have a separate tax ID number. So all the taxes will be reported through that tax ID number. Uh, I use my social security number as a sole proprietor. So everything reports through me, through Joe, okay? We're having a very nice Schedule C class. And by the way, I'll go ahead and bring this up now. We got tons of webinars, people. And you're invited to all of them. You've now got a personal invitation to any and all webinars we got till the end of the year. We're slowing down because of the holidays. Don't, don't get me wrong. But coming up in December, early December, we got a, a tax class on sole proprietorships and tracking income and, and reporting to a Schedule C. You're going to be a sole prop. Come to that class. It's going to be great. I teach half of it. Uh, uh, and it talks about how to track this, this income using your social security number, okay? My wife is a real estate agent. Her name's Judy, Judy Rodola. Guess what? She was a sole prop for 20 years, okay? The last 20 years as a real estate agent, she's a sole proprietor, okay? She has a Schedule C. So our taxes virtually look like two Schedule Cs. <laughs> the profit from my business, the profit from her business, E-I-E-I-O. So again, uh, that class is coming up. And again, the state might have some stuff you got to go through. Uh, franchise tax board, that again is for uh, state income tax filings. If you have employees, we won't go there today. There's a lot of fancy dancing going on if you get to be, uh, you know, if you, if you need employees. Uh, I understand January 1, it's going to get worse. We had uh, this morning at our chamber uh, uh, meeting in Reading, uh, O2 staffing was there. And O2 staffing said there's a whole new set of rules and regs coming out uh, for employees and employers as of 2021. So uh, uh, again, we've got these seminars are going to be just worth their weight in gold. And there's going to be a bunch of seminars in January to help on those new changes, by the way. And if you're an employer, there you go. Workman's cop insurance, wage, wage and hour laws. In fact, I believe, if I'm not wrong here, and I don't think I am, minimum wage goes up again January of 2021. So here we go again. So uh, a lot of important uh, changes happening and things that are occurring. Uh, one of the things I know that was mentioned to today at our meeting uh, with the chamber today was that if you're an employer, you're going to have to go through as an employer a two-hour uh, uh, sexual harassment and uh, what's, the other, what's the other thing? Shoot senior moment, sexual harassment and, oh, discrimination, class. So you're going to have to do this, become certified in this class uh, next year. I think you got up to six months to take it or something. So uh, again, all new changes occurring. It's hard to keep up sometimes. We'll try to keep you abreast of what's happening though. Joe? Yes. With some of those classes and things that they require you to train in, don't they have a certain um, employee number that you have, a number of employees before those are required? Yeah, there is. And 
So if, if someone has like one or two employees, they may not have to worry about it. But I think five employees is when some of these start to kick in. And it used to be quite a bit higher, like 20 I think employees. You're absolutely correct. And uh, they've lowered, like you say, they've lowered that number uh, to bring in more people to take it, you know, because of all the issues that people have been having with discriminatory situations. So, so that, you know, that, yeah, it's, it, it's just the way things are in our society today. But it is a way for you to protect your well, business it really by is. education. It usually is. Yeah. And if you're selling a product, you have to have a seller's permit. Again, we're going to send you a list of all the addresses, phone numbers, and contact emails for the local areas to get this stuff. You don't have to memorize it. But if you're selling a product, and that's kind of an interesting thought. Let's think about this. Uh, Linda and I sell service, okay? And I'm sitting at a wooden desk, so I'm knocking on a wooden desk. Knock on wood, Linda and I do not have to charge sales tax on our doing classes or, or telling you stuff yet. <laughs> uh, we anticipate that changing one day, but currently you do not have to charge sales tax on service. But if I was selling this watch and I was buying it wholesale and selling it to you for retail, when I sell it to you, you got to pay that seven and a quarter percent. Okay. And then we got to collect it and we got to send it to the state electronically zap it. And there's rules and regulations and so forth. That's why QuickBooks is cool because when Rebecca teaches QuickBooks, she'll just show you how to do that uh, for the sales tax. But uh, so anyway, Seller's permit, okay? And again, we talked about fictitious name briefly. Let's clarify. Joe Radola's debt consulting, okay? Or even Joe Radola's consulting, even if I did it that way. When I use my surname and the name of the business, it negates the need to file fictitious name because it's my name, Redola. Okay. If I went JR Consulting, aha, that's fictitious. So I would have to file, fill out the form, 10 or 15 bucks to the county, take the thing down to a newspaper somewhere, put it in the newspaper for 10 days. And believe it or not, tell people in the newspaper, I'm opening JR Debt Consulting. <laughs> That's one of the most old-fashioned things we got going right now with the day and age of technology, right, that we still have to put it in the paper. Who reads a paper? <laughs> but suffice it to say, that's the rule. So it costs about 100 150 120 somewhere in there to get the whole thing done because of the newspaper filing. So well, you, know, you can consider that when you're making the name of your business. Business license, usually in the cities, as I mentioned, okay? Uh, if you're food service, you'll have special food service certifications. You may have county things you're going to have to uh, abide by, okay? Uh, land zoning, that will be something that, uh, 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 Carla, you may have to be interested in on your property up there in Siskiyou County. Is, is the property zoned pro appropriately for business or, you know, whatever. And of course, there's that public safety food and beverage. Here it is, Cal Gold. This is a great site, uh, okay? What's cool about this site is you can go in and put your city or county in the top box, and in the bottom box, there's a drop down. If you're a, a, a service business, a dentist, a restaurant, or whatever, put the type of business you're opening in the second box, hit search. And that'll give you a list of all the potential certifications, rules, regs, uh, licenses you may be required to have to start your business. So it'd be cool to go there first, print that out before you make that first appointment to see me. Okay. Any questions? I've seen some things popping in. Is there anything in there that's killer? 
Yeah, we have some conversations going on with banks. People were asking about some banks in different areas. So it's kind of not fun to see each other, people support each other with the banks that they're, um, that they're working with. Uh, I had a shout out to Cornerstone. Someone was asking for a good bank in Western Trinity. And um, someone else talked about uh, Coast Central Credit Union. So they're just yes. supporting each I've other. I've heard of Coast Central also. That's correct. And Coast Central, I believe it. it, it I, I'm not extreme. Thank you. Thank you all. I've been meaning to contact those people. <laughs> and guess what Joe didn't do? Joe didn't contact Coast Central. I think their head office is in Eureka. I'm not going to hold, uh, hold anybody to that, but it's a credit union and they do business stuff. They're one of the few credit unions in Northern California because members first here in Reading and Sierra uh, Central Credit Union don't do business. But Coast Central, I believe, does. So that's reminding me, I want to call them and find out what kind of loans they do for small businesses. And I know Tri Counties is still in Trinity County, I believe. So you got a couple of options over there. Uh, Coast Central and Tri Counties, okay. Uh, and Cornerstone does overlap, but then you got to come into to Reading to to do banking. Some it, it, it can become a burden when the freeways snowed in, you know. Okay, let's whoop right along from idea to reality. Testing the idea. Hopefully you got something people want. We talked about that earlier. Hopefully you got some dollars or availability to get some. And hopefully you can produce. Okay. So from idea to production. Wow. Sometimes that's a little bit of a distance, isn't it? Uh, the sweet spot, the sweet spot obviously is where they overlap. Okay. So the sweet spot's right in the middle. Your best business model is that it, you got the money, you can, you can produce it, and people want it. Okay, you're going to buy it. Desirable and viable. Okay, what the problem is, wants and needs. Do the customer need the item or want the item? As I mentioned earlier, a lot of the recreational products, dick Sporting Goods, Slammed, uh, Headwaters Kayak, called Headwaters Recreation, actually. Slammed. Harrison's Marine, an RV. Slammed. Okay. Why? They can't keep they can't keep product in their in their showroom. Two years ago, you could have your choice of an RV. No one was buying them. Okay. Everybody was flying everywhere. Fly, 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 fly. Guess what? No one flying. All of a sudden, it became hip again. How about that? In the 60s and 50s, it was hip. Now it's hip again. And then, and then kayaks, again, you know, you can spend $200 to $2,000, and you can float all over the lakes around here, man. That's a great deal. I've seen more kayaks on Shasta Lake. I'm an avid bass fisherman. Anybody who ever sees my Facebook personal Joe Redola Facebook page will know that I like to fish. I've never seen so many kayaks in my entire life. Unbelievable. So you see, it's it's interesting how that happens. Can you sell enough to earn a profit and cash flow? One of the things on a business plan, if you need money, and it frightens everybody to death, is cash flow forecasts. Don't be afraid. I'm telling you right now, I love doing those. It is my forte. I'm a numbers man. I was a math major in college. Believe it or not, I like calculus and all that garbage of all things. Don't use it anymore, but I love math. It has an answer. <laughs> How about that? And no guessing. So when you get to that forecast stuff, you and I are going to sit down together. Either by now, it had to be Zoom. I've got a nice blank format, and we start crystal balling your business. We'll see how long it takes for you to make money. And Joe, it's those cool. spreadsheets are so valuable because instead of people just having kind of an inkling of what's going on, or maybe they're thinking it's super, super successful or not, 
the numbers really tell an amazing story. Once you made me fill that form out, I remember that. And Linda helped me the other day with a, with a class we did having to do with forecasts. And that, that little spreadsheet is, is worth its weight in gold, I'll tell you. And so, and so we'll work on that together. Don't be afraid, okay? Main thing is don't be frightened. Some of the things you'll need to know is what's your supply chain? Can you produce or get the stuff you need to sell it? That's one of the problems with my kayak buddy. He's having a hard time getting kayaks from the manufacturers. Why? Because everybody in the United States is selling kayaks. It's sort of like toilet paper. <laughs> Everybody's got a rush on toilet paper. They're having a rush on kayaks. So the poor guy's got a hard time getting supply. So make sure your supply chain's good. Cost of goods, very important. What is cost of goods? Again, let's go to the watch. If you buy 100 of these watches for 10 bucks or five, let's say five bucks, you buy 100 of these watches for five bucks and you sell them to me in the public for 15, okay? Cost of goods is five. 15 is your sale price. If that was the only expense, your profit's what? 10, right? $10. So that's what cost of goods is. Can you, and you, can you get these? <laughs> can you get these? Uh, and do people want them? Okay. Could people do people do people want these watches? Are you going to sell business to business wholesale? Are you going to sell business to consumer retail? Uh, they talk about early adopters, people that are, are they waiting for your service? Uh, one of the problems again with the kayak, he had to tell a guy the other day, a guy came in and says, I want this kayak before Christmas. Dude. May not be easy to do. And it's, it's what, four or five weeks away, right? Stay so might not be, might not be here in time. So all those things come into play, right? Do you need a physical space or can you do it out of your house? Again, service business, you can do it out of your house, no problem. What's your territory? What's your coverage? Are you going to have to sell online? Most retail and other types of places that are doing a service that can be widespread, you're going to have to have online presence and, and you're going to have to use it. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. We're even using LinkedIn now, okay? All these different platforms that you can do. Problem with those platforms, as uh, Lonnie will tell us all, as our marketing specialist is, update, 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 update. Can't drop the ball, okay? You're only as good as your last post. So if you do use those, there you go. So online presence is very important for most products and most services. My product's pretty easy. Helping people with credit, I only do it around here. And the only reason is that there's nobody else that has a, a, a service agency around locally to do that, okay? The rest of it's 800 number. That's what happened to my business that, that, that let me go. Consumer credit. I oh, will do it from 800 number. Closest office, Sacramento. People won't mind. When it comes to credit, people like to talk to a person. It's personal. It's important. It's scary. You know? So that's why I like to help people in person. Again, this is as close as we can get. Isn't that a bummer? On my island in the, in the Bahamas. <laughs> Show me okay, that. any questions? Yes, Christine. Um, so you're talking um, retail. How This form that you have, would it help you to decide, are you going to be selling wholesale or are you going to be selling retail? Because correct me if I'm wrong, if you're doing wholesale, you don't have that tax. You just pass it along to that person correct. doing retail. So how would, like for me, I'm not, uh, that's my big question mark. I right off the bat, I really don't want to be open to the public. I'd, I'd rather um, be selling to like the Forest Service, CDF, um, uh, private forestry uh, rehabilitation companies. Um, so we didn't have to find out what that is called. Okay. Is that a retail, is that a retail sale? Is that a wholesale sale? And again, with me not being an ag specialist, uh -huh. I would help you find that answer because I don't know. Okay. Right. 
I mean, it, it sounds like it could be wholesale. And then again, you think about it. If the feds are buying paper for their printer, they're paying tax. So if they're buying trees to replant their forests, I don't know. I don't know the answer, but we'll find out for you. That's okay. the key. See, okay. so uh, you're going to be exciting. I can tell you that already because right. you're going to have we're going to have some fun because I'm going to learn new stuff. See, okay. so and we'll find it for you, no doubt. Thanks. Business plan. All right, where do you go for a business plan? And by the way, this is the reason businesses fail. I hate to bring it up. At least I don't bring it up right up front anymore. I bring it up near the end of the, of the presentation. Uh, businesses fail 8 out of 10, 7 out of 10, fail the first two years. Still happening. Still happening. These are the reasons why. Not enough cash, not enough commitment, too much competition. Business plan wasn't made. Don't have the skills. Don't have the marketing capabilities. Don't have the customers. You know, can't budget. All these are reasons why businesses fail. So business plan is imperative. What I like to suggest you do before you make the first appointment with me is at least make a one-page business plan. So people will often say to me, Joe, what's a one-page business plan? You can Google heck out of it. You'll find a ton. YouTube, unbelievable. All right? So one-page business plan. Name of the business. Who's going to run it? Do you have a logo? What are your marketing, quick marketing strategies? Are you going to be Facebook, website, Instagram, Twitter, whatever? Okay. Address, contact, phone number. Okay. Then you're going to have product. What are your products going to be? Okay. Who are you going to sell to? Who's your competition? Right. The kayak guy, for instance, that I told you about earlier, he had competition from Walmart and Kmart at the time, all the way up to the the big kayak companies. Okay, the the ones you see on uh, you know when you when you go online, the major companies, right? So he had to find, formulate where he was between a two hundred dollar Walmart kayak, Costco kayak. And his two thousand twenty five hundred dollar kayak. Okay, if you guys want to look up something you ever found, you haven't looked at it yet. Look up Sea Breacher. Sea Breacher. That's a fun one, guys. And they're manufactured right here in Shasta County. How about that? Hey, you're gonna have I to tell call them how to spell that one. It's yeah, Sea Breacher. S yeah, S-E-A-B-R-E-A-C-H-E-R. I like to call them a combination between a submarine and a jet ski. I don't know how else to explain it. All right. There's, they look like whales, sharks. They have one that looks like a swordfish. And they're a fully enclosed, mobile, run by jet ski motor, submersible boat submarine. That's all I can tell you. They're a kick. You'll see them out at Shasta Lake every so often. They test them out up there. They are not cheap. They're twenty-five to thirty-five thousand dollars a piece. Okay, so talk about a a a market that's not your run-of-the-mill jet ski person. Okay, plus the fact that these things are submersible. They don't go very deep, but they'll go four or five feet down under the water. It's amazing. And they jump. It's, it's, you got to watch them, man. And they're made right here. Their biggest market is overseas. That's something. They sell overseas, their market. So one page business plan. It's all you need. Okay. Don't worry about finances up front. It'll be nice to know if you have some money. Come in with as much money as you can. I'm, I'm going to ask you that. How much money you got? So have that. If you can figure out approximately how much money you need, be good to have that too. Okay. We'll talk about financials and break even point. Don't worry about it now. But basically what we're saying here is <clears throat> how long is it going to take you to break even? Important thing to know. And there's that schedule C. 
So please join me. Let me see. I'll get the date of that class for you real quick. That Schedule C class is, ah, yes, December 1, 10 a.m. So December 1, 10 a.m., the two Joes are going to be teaching you. It's called Tax Planning and Preparation for Sole Proprietors. And right now, it looks like, Linda, you're going to, you may be, oh, maybe it is, maybe it's going to be Emily. But either Emily or David are going to, are going to uh, uh, co-host this thing. And the two Joes, Joe, Joe Rodola, Joe Dorco, he's a tax guy, going to so teach you I that put, one. I put a link in the chat so people could go to, the, uh, to our particular calendar and see when the future webinars are. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And we're going to walk you through the Schedule C. And some people say, well, wait a minute, Joe, isn't that rudimentary accounting? Yes, it is. And I'll tell you why we're promoting it more than we've ever done before. When, I, when, when COVID hit uh, in March uh, and we shut down and the government came out with all this money that they're flinging around, guess what people had to submit to the feds to gain access to the PPP payroll protection loan and the idle disaster loan funds. Boom, Schedule C. And uh, we had more people go, what's that? We don't want that to happen anymore. We want our sole proprietors, whether they do their own taxes or they give it to their mother or brother or sister to do, you need to know what the Schedule C is for, okay? It's basically a reportable page of your tax return that shows how much money you made minus how much money you wrote off equals profit. And by the way, if you want to know what line number that is, it's 31. So line number 31 was the magic line on the Schedule C that was required to be told to the Fed's SBA, and on the payroll protection loans to the banks, and people went, I don't know, what's the Schedule C? So we're going to make sure none of you ever don't know what a Schedule C is. <laughs> How about that? How are we doing question-wise? Anybody got one that's burning right now? Yeah, feel free to turn your microphone on and ask a question. Nothing at the moment, Joe. All right. Guess what? We got a lot of people in town willing to help you. And here's a, here's a, a good scotch of a scotch of a, of a check of the places that will. Superior California Economic Development, that's our little uh, micro lender we talked about earlier, SCED. SCORE, Service Corps of Retired Executives, they're a group that get help with business planning. They're not as active here as in a lot of cities, but they're here. Women's Business Center, we talked about the WBC at Jedi, Tricia, fabulous lady, and we got Nina over there and a couple other people, real helpful, uh, and uh, can help with women's business own certification as well. EDC, Economic Development Corp, they're the ones who are really involved heavily with new manufacturing companies and new tech companies, okay? PTAC, Procurement Technical Assistance Center. There are cousins on the coast, as I like to call them. PTAC is the place where if you're a veteran, a disabled veteran, certification in those two particular areas is huge because the government needs to contract all sources of government, city, county, state, federal, has a requirement to contract with Veterans and disabled veterans for first. They have to check. So if you're certified and you're on the top of the list, guess what? If you're offering a service, I got a person that has a bulldozer. Certified veteran-owned bulldozer. Guess what they did the last three, four months? Unfortunately, they worked Zog, fire, and this fire, and that fire, and the other fire. Okay. I got a couple of veterans owning, owning water trucks. Guess what they've been doing the last three or four months, right? Zog fire, whatever. 
and they're certified veterans, so they're on the top of the list. If I had a water truck, Joe, I'm not a veteran, and you got Bob, who's a disabled vet, he's going first. Joe gets what's left at the bottom. See what I'm saying? So it's hugely important. We set you up with PTAC, get that certification done. Smart Center for looking for employees. Great place to look. They have programs available. If you hire somebody in a certain category, they may even offer three months to six months. They'll pay the salary of that person to train with you. Hmm. I've, helped, I've helped several businesses get their first employee through Smart Center and gain access to that free employee during training. That's really a cool program. Uh, so that's cool. And of course, Chamber of Commerce. If you're selling product that a lot of people in the community and the county are going to be buying from you, do not discount the chambers. Okay? Reading Chamber is the most active. Anderson Chamber is the next most active. Shasta Lake, the next most active. Bernie has a small chamber as well. Jake Mangus the CEO of the Reading Chamber, uh, along with myself, we've been highly involved with the county grants and trying to save these businesses that are having to pivot, right? Pivot their business to outdoor dining, to, you know, whatever it is you gotta do, right? Uh, they're highly involved with everything that's going on and Jake's a heck of a guy, so. So I think we did it. Discovery on, it's about 5.30, so we're right about on the button here. Uh, making it legal, idea to reality, turning into business plan. The uh, If you want to check out full business plans, uh, bplans.com, bplans.com has over 500 sample business plans you can look at, Okay. In other words, they charge $1,500, $2,000 to do a business plan. Well, you may not want to spend that kind of money, right? So, but you want to look, you want to take a peek, okay? I know for one thing, I have happened to help several people with pizza parlors. They got five pizza parlor business plans, I think, on that site you can look at for pizza, pizza parlors all over the country. And I can tell you, there's a sentence in every one of those business plans that says, I'm going to make the best pizza in town. <laughs> right? You're not going to say, I, 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 my pizza sucks. No, you're not going to say that. Right? So, in other words, you can go on this site. You can look and pick out ideas from those plans and see how it's written and see how it's worded. And I've even sometimes looked at their financials because they post the two-year forecast at the end of those babies too. So we can grab ideas on, oh, I forgot about that expense. And what about this one? Oh, yeah. we get Because not every business has each type of expense. A little different in each one. So anyway, bplans, bplans.com, great website. So what's the next step? One-on-one -on -one advising is the next step. Uh, check our center calendar, of course, for all the upcoming events. And here's how to do it. There's our website, sbdcsc.org. Okay. Emily, our right arm, she sets appointments. She does intakes. Make sure you're signed in correctly. We are currently located at 5800 Airport Road out here in Reading by the airport. We're actually right across from the Reading Utility uh, uh, REU office across the airport road access. We're inside the frozen gourmet building, that beautiful park-like property uh, just south of the Shasta View light on airport road, okay? We sublet from the Builders Exchange. A lot of people may know what the Builders Exchange is. You've heard of them. They help people go uh, get their certifications for plumbing and electrical and all that. So we're in that building currently. We're trying to find a place downtown to move to sometime next year. We'll see if we can do that. We'll end up hopefully somewhere down uh, between Placer, California, Pine Street, that whole area down in uh, downtown Reading. But we're right now on Airport Road, 222-8323.
Thank you all very much. Any other last minute questions? There is, Joe. Um, Carla's asking, are you doing any face-to-face -face meetings currently? No, unfortunately we're not. We, uh, in the purple phase of California, uh, uh, and due to issues of liability, so forth and so on, uh, we are uh, prohibited from doing face-to-face, -face, but we can do these Zoom things. I did a Zoom individual one-on-one -on -one this morning with one of my clients. So we can Zoom it, we can phone it, and of course, communicate a bunch by email, so. And the nice thing with Zoom is Joe can bring up a spreadsheet and just like he's sharing his screen right now, he can share it right there with you and you're a safe distance apart and he can provide all that support of a meeting and you don't have to travel, which is pretty nice. It is, we can do it from the comfort of technically anywhere. Carla uh, said that they'll be setting up Zoom soon, which is great. And Zoom, just so you know, Zoom comes with, if they're still doing it the way they used to, you can use Zoom for free and it used to be, and this might still be the case, you would get 45 minutes of a meeting for free. Now, as soon as you go over that 45 minutes, which is what most business meetings are, then you need to buy the um, buy their through monthly membership or whatever option you choose. But you know, you can do a lot of half hour meetings and use their tool, get to learn it and not have any expense for your company yet, which you just end that 30 minute meeting and start another one. And there you get your hour. It's kind of sad. I know you probably all of you are experiencing the same issue, but uh, unfortunately, my uh, lovely daughter and her fiance, uh, they're living together currently across town. And unfortunately, he has contracted or was tested positive for COVID uh, Tuesday. Tuesday. So guess what? There went Thanksgiving, didn't it? It's gone. So guess what we're doing Thanksgiving Day? We're Zooming. And so we're going to set up a, a, a Zoom meeting uh, and uh, throw it up on the television in our particular case. And uh, my daughter is pretty tech, uh, tech savvy and she's going to do the same. So at least at dinner time, we'll have a chance to see each other and be with each other uh, uh, at both our separate houses so that we don't have that problem. So uh, yeah, Zoom is great, Skype works. There's all sorts of options available. And just to let people know within the next couple of days, usually it takes about three days, you'll receive an email from Emily. She's gonna share the PowerPoint presentation that Joe shared with you today. She's gonna to share with you a link to the recording of this training we just did. And also there's gonna be a survey there. And the survey is so important to us. The survey results is what we share with our funders to let them know how we're spending their money. And our favorite thing to learn from the survey results is what do you want to see in future webinars? And the beauty of it is you don't have to be in Shasta or Trinity counties to give us guidance of what you'd like to see. We want to do trainings that are going to provide value for you. So please let us know where you have gaps in your business and see if we can create some webinars to help educate you on those topics. We are at the end true. of our time, Joe. Can you wrap it up for us? Thank you very much. Thank you all for attending. Uh, probably won't talk to you maybe before Thanksgiving. We're only open three days next week. So uh, have a wonderful thanks and safe Thanksgiving, all of you. Uh, and I really look forward to trying to assist you in, your, in the startup of your new business. So take care and have a great evening. Thanks, Linda. Thank you, Joe.